Welcome to this webinar. We in Tieto Every are very proud to present this new integration between Teams and Public 360 together with Microsoft. The last year I've been working with Teams a lot and I've often missed the possibility to have a Teams Public 360 integration. And we're so happy that so many of you uh, are attending this webinar. And that tells us that this integration isn't important just for us, but it's also important for you, our customers. I'm happy to introduce today's speakers. From Microsoft, we have Dag Nyru, who is the director of Modern Workplace in Microsoft Norway. We also have Lisa Olausson, who is a business developer in the Public 360 unit of Tieto Every. And I'm Thomas Messel. I'm a product manager for integrations in Public 360. First, some housekeeping rules. If you got any questions, please ask them in the chat box. And you can ask in English, Norwegian, Danish or Swedish, and we will answer as good as we can. The recording will be sent out after the webinar is finished. And we will also send out a survey to you that we would like you to fill out. Okay, so the topics for this session. Doug will first tell us about the vision of Microsoft Teams and how important Teams is. And then Lisa will tell us how 360 integration with MS Teams has been developed the typical functions you should know about, and a demo of the 360 integration with MS Teams. And in the end, I will tell you a little bit about how you as a customer can get started with the integration. Now I'm very happy to introduce Doug. Take it away, Doug. Thank you, Thomas. First of all, Thank you for inviting me, and uh, thank you all for listening in. I want to start this session by telling you a little bit about the overall strategy we at Microsoft have for Microsoft Teams. Now, Microsoft Teams was already before the pandemic by far our fastest growing application. And when COVID-19 hit us, we obviously saw an incredible ramp up in usage. From Friday, March the 13th to Monday, March the 16th, we saw over 600% increase in usage. And that was just the first weekend of the pandemic. Since then, we've seen steadily growth, and in particular here in the Nordics, where we are really fast at adapting new technologies. In Norway, we are now ranked as the number one country on the planet when looking at the percentage of the population using Teams on a daily basis. Now, many people think about Microsoft Teams as Skype version 2.0. And I must emphasize this is not the case. Microsoft Teams goes way beyond Skype in so many ways. In fact, Microsoft's chief executive officer, Satya Nadella, goes as far as stating that Teams will be as important as the operating system or the internet browser. Now, this is a pretty strong statement. And for those of you who follow Satya, you will know that when he seldom says anything like this without truly meaning it. Now, we have done many studies in collaboration and productivity. And one of those recent studies, it was pointed out that in order to be truly productive, an employee must be allowed to stay in flow. And by that, we mean being allowed to stay focused on the task at hand without unnecessary interruptions. What the study showed was that context switching, like having to jump from one application to the other to get a task done, often took the individual out of the flow. Personally, I can easily relate to this. For instance, when I'm sitting working in Teams and I need to do a lookup in an email, 
to get some data point for the message that I'm writing. And I then see an email from my general manager stating that I need to urgently reach out to this very important customer. And woof, there I go, out of the flow. And it takes me quite some time to get back to where I was. So what we see is that Teams has become the hub for your work. By making your needed business applications available directly in Teams, you will be able to easier use these and stay in flow. That's why we think of Teams as a platform. A platform where, for instance, independent software vendors can develop really smart and intuitive business applications that are easily accessible for the end user from their own Teams client. In a way, Microsoft Teams is an opportunity to meet your people where they already are. This is where you can use regular Microsoft applications like Word or PowerPoint, Excel and so on. You can use hundreds of third-party applications or you can make your own application through our Power Platform from app templates or build them from scratch via DevOps if you'd prefer that. We often see customers go through a maturity curve when adopting Microsoft Teams. It starts off with the key basic features like chat, meetings, but quickly moves to the next phase where consistency and familiarity allow you to use existing applications within Teams. This could be editing in PowerPoint from within the Teams client or storing files in SharePoint using the file function in Microsoft Teams and many, many other. The next steps are where things are starting to get really interesting because this is where true innovation actually starts to form. First up is the simplification phase where you can make your established business processes easier, ex easier to execute by allowing end users to embed the process into their daily workflows. And the second is where modernization kicks in, allowing you to replace or build a new homegrown line of business applications into Microsoft Teams. Today, I am very excited to see Tieto Every, one of our biggest and most important partners, taking a massive step into the simplification area by announcing the availability of Publix 360 into Microsoft Teams. This will allow end users to archive files much easier directly from Microsoft Teams where they already do the majority of their work. Thomas and Lisa, I am truly looking forward to seeing what you have in play for us today. And also I would like to hear about what's coming next. Thank you very much, Doug. Now I would like to give the word to Lisa Olausen, who's going to take us into the details of the Public 360 Teams integration. Yes, thank you, Thomas. I wish I could have been uh, joining you in the studio today, but uh, this works as just as well. So I will take you through a little bit of uh, the background. And when we have been working with this uh, Teams integration, we have done extensive uh, research. We have conducted interviews uh, with customers in Norway, Sweden, Finland, and uh, Denmark to gather as much input as we possibly could. We have also run an innovation week. We have sent out multiple surveys, and we have also run discovery projects uh, with customers and uh, iterated on the design over and over again. I just want to bring up a few points uh, from what the customers found as most important with Teams and this integration. And uh, not so surprising maybe, but the simultaneous editing functions was very important to be able to efficiently work together both internally and externally on the same files. And it was also very important to start the flow in Microsoft Teams and then be able to just send a file over to 360. And also it was brought up uh, the importance of having some type of mirroring or sync back of information between 360 and the Teams. Also had um, a session on Tieto Every Public uh, 360's Digital Summit Conference on 2020. And uh, in this survey, the users uh, got to answer the question on what scenario was most important to start with when building this Teams integration. 
and that was to start in Teams and then send to Public 360 rather than vice versa as a first scenario. So we have started there, but we also got uh, three other bullets as very common feedback. The first was that we cannot be that narrow to only have a one-to-one -one relation between a case and the channel. There was also a wish to be able to send files to existing cases and not only create new ones all the time. And there was also a wish to be able to connect multiple files to the same document card. And we are really happy that we have managed to incorporate this feedback into uh, this uh, integration. With that said, I will continue on to go through the functions on a high level. So in this integration, it's possible to just mark one file or mark multiple files and then send it to 360. When you do so, you can choose if you want to create a new case or if you want to connect these files to an already existing case. As you have established the connection between Teams and 360 on the file, doesn't mean that you have to stop working with the file in Teams. You can continue to work in Teams and the new versions that you create will be continuously synced over to 360 as you go. We have also added some logic to make sure that we're not getting any conflicts between the documents. So if a file is checked out in 360, it is also checked out in Teams. This means that when the file is checked out in 360, the users in team Teams can only read the file at that moment. It's also uh, the same logic for if, for example, the document status is set to officially recorded, it's not possible to uh, edit the file in Teams any longer. So then the users can also uh, only read the information there. To make the archiving as easy as possible, we're using a default value set when we're creating new cases and document cards from Teams. This means that we are setting a certain metadata on the case and documents. We are, for example, setting the access code, the responsible person is the one who created the document card or the case, we're setting the statuses, the document category, and so on. And if you want to change any of this uh, metadata later on, you can easily just navigate to 360 and do so. I was very short about uh, the functions and I think it's time to move on to the actual demo. Okay, so now it's time for the demo. And I have on my screen here opened up the uh, web application of uh, Microsoft Teams. As you can see here in the top of the UI, we have built this 360 app, which is shown as a tab right here. This app works perfectly fine, both in the web application of Teams, which I am running right here, but it also works just as well in the desktop application of Teams. So this tab uh, is located here on the top of the UI and it's only accessible to 360 users. So this means that if you are collaborating with external um, users, they will not be able to see the 360 tab right here. So, but what we have done is that we have the, uh, well, we have the original files tab right here where I guess you all, uh, most of you recognize uh, the UI. And if I move over to the 360 tab, you can instantly see that we have tried to follow the look and feel of the Teams as much as we can, so that moving between these two tabs will be as seamless as possible. So um, what we have here is a grid which we have built where you can see the columns as the, the title of the folders or files, when they were modified uh, at the latest time and who did it. Here we're starting to see the information which is connected to 360. So if I connect something to a case, I will get uh, a link to the case. And the same goes for the document card, being able to also view the document status and then um, an archive status. I will go through this more in detail later on, but 
I also want to mention that the original files have been teams. This is where you are uh, continuing to work with the files. So this is from here that you're making all your edits. And this is the 360 tab. This is where you're viewing metadata connected to the files uh, as it is in 360 and also the status. Um, but what we can see here is that I have a folder, the forgotten folder of 2020. In, and if I navigate to it, I can see that it contains two files right here, Culture Festival of 2020 and also the summary of the festival. What I will do right now is just to easily uh, archive these to 360. And you see these um, at this time um, buttons here, which uh, are not uh, enabled. But when I mark it, it becomes possible to click. So if I mark these two files at this moment and I press Archive to 360, a panel opens to the right. And since I chose to mark two files, I get the question right away if I want these to be one single document card or if the files should be on separate document cards. I will choose to uh, put both of these files to the single uh, to one document card and then also decide to connect this to an existing case, which I already have for the culture, culture festival. So here in the drop down, I can see the history list of the cases that I've recently visited. And here I have the culture festival for 2020. But it's also possible to search uh, um, just uh, as you would do in 360 in this box. And here I'm also uh, able to set uh, a title for the document card. At this point, it takes a default title of the first file, but it's of course possible for me to change that if I want to do so. So now I'm creating one single document card. I'm uh, connected in, connecting it to an existing case and then also setting the document title. And then I press save to 360. So, and now that that is loaded, we can see that we have gotten a connection to the case and it's a link so I can just easily open it in 360. And then we also have uh, a link to the document card. And we can also see that the status has updated so we can easily see when we hover over that this has been archived to 360. Okay. So, uh, Thomas, do you have the possibility to just uh, do the last uh, quality check yeah. on these files and uh, change the document status to officially recorded when you're done? Yeah, I'll do that. Perfect. Okay. In the meantime, I will continue over to the original files tab in Teams. I want to upload uh, more files, which I have related to uh, the hiring of the summer personnel. So, here I have some files. I will just mark all of these and drop it into the files tab. I can now see that it's uploading six items and they're now located in here in Lisa's channel. So if I navigate back to the 360 tab, I can see that they have mirrored over the files and also that none of them are archived in 360 yet. So what I want to do is, okay, and uh, now I see that I still have two files connected to the culture festival of 2020. So I have a feeling that I might be running into more of these files as I work along here with teams. So I'm going to make this really simple for myself and mark one of the folders here. And as the difference you see when I mark a file, I get to archive it. When I mark this folder, I can set a case connection to a folder because we have learned that our customers really like to work um, with cases as a folder. So here I can say that the forgotten folder 2020 uh, will be connected to a certain case. And I want to connect it to the case Culture Festival 2020 and then save it to 360. So here we see now that we on a folder level have a connection to a case. So now I can just take the two files which I had, 
the budget uh, of culture festival and also uh, what food they were going to eat. Um, I can just go back to the Fice tab, mark this and move it into the forgotten 2020 folder. So I move it right here and going back to the 360 tab, it's uh, mirrored also right away. So now when I open the forgotten 2020 folder, I can find the two files here. And since I now have set a default folder connection to a case, then it makes archiving really simple. So I marked my two files and I press the archive to 360. Um, now you can see the difference here. I still get to choose if it should be a single document card or if it should be separate document cards. But what has changed here is that we have a selected case already. And if you want to change the case that is set on the folder, you have to make an active action to do so. So then you can change the case by clicking here and then you will get up the same dialogue. But having a folder connection uh, to a case makes it a lot easier. So. What we can also see now is that Thomas has worked very quickly and he has both done the quality check and also changed the status to officially recorded. And what we can see here now in the UI is that we have received this lock um, um, right by the file title. And if I hover over this lock, I will see that the file is set to read only due to the document status is now set in officially recorded. It's also possible to view the document status here in the document status column. So nicely done, Thomas. Uh, what I will do now is that I am going to continue to work with um, a file that I have here, tasks and routines for the summer personnel. And I want to start by archiving it to 360 first so that I can establish the connection between 360 and this file in Teams. So I mark it here and I archive to 360. Since this is completely new, I don't have a case yet, so I will create a new case for this. So when I choose new case, I get to set a case title. It will as default take the file title, but it's possible to change that if you want. So I will call this summer personal for It will set the access group, but you can change it here. And you can also uh, set the document title just as before. So when I save it here, I have created both a new case and a document card. And the link is, um, is located here. So I can easily open it in 360 and go and see what it looks like. So when I open it up here, we see that we have the document card, we have our file, and we also have the connection to the case. We have set the document card uh, category to internal, the status is set to reserved, and the responsible person is me, since I was the one who created this document card. Access code is unclassified and access group is public. And this is what we do through uh, the default values that we use. So what I want to do now is that I want to uh, edit this file from 360. So I click here and edit, and the file will soon open in Word. And now it has opened, and I can see that part of the tasks and routines for the summer personnel is to always remember it's important to make new coffee if you finish it, unless it's after 16 o'clock. But I will change this to 17. But before I check this in, I want to see what this looks like from the Teams view. So I go back to Teams here, now that we have the file checked out. And if I go to the Files tab, this has also been checked out in Teams, meaning that no other users can make changes to this document when I have this checked out. So, it's set to read-only mode. I can now open here and I will, I have my edit done already, so I will check this back in. 
and now it has been checked in in 360. The lock here is gone. And if I refresh the page here, I can also see that it has been checked in in Teams. And if I open this uh, file here, I can see that I now have my edit. But do you agree, Thomas, that there can be a deadline for when it's okay to have coffee? I'm not sure. So. Well, I, I have coffee after 5 p.m. at least, so yeah. So uh, no deadline, unless it's after uh, midnight. Leave it like that. So what will happen now is that this new version of this file will sync over to Public 360. So I will go back to the Files tab. And now if I go to Open, open Document in 360, we're back to where we were. And if I view this now, I should be able to see the new version uh, that has been created. Okay, I see it hasn't uh, come through yet, but this can be that we have a job that runs on a, I think, three minute interval. So Thomas, we don't have time to wait, I think. So do you have the possibility to just run this job? Yeah, I'll do it. Perfect. It's run now. Awesome. Okay, I will just refresh the page once to be sure. And I will view the file. And we now have the new file synced over to 360. And with that said, that concludes this demo. Thank you for a great demo, Lisa. Thanks for having me, Thomas. Then we will move on to the additions in the next release and onwards. So first I'm going to talk a little bit about the nearest future, which is the 5.10 release, which is coming in autumn sometime. So the first thing that we're going to implement is some more logging so that you can see who, if it's an internal or an external participant in the team that has edited the file in Teams. So that will be visible in the audit trail in public 360. And in 5.10, we will have support for the process-based classification and the Saki 2 uh, classification to support the Swedish and Finnish market 100%. We will also have some new uh, exciting functionality that will make you as a user uh, able to search for a case inside of the chat box in Teams. And uh, by doing that, you can choose to export or synchronize files from 360 to the Teams file tab. So I think that is a very exciting possibility. Of course, we have to be sure that this is done in a secure way, and we will work uh, closely with Microsoft uh, to be sure that this is, uh, this is uh, done in a secure way. A little bit more long-term plans. We are planning to implement archiving of chat from the channel. But right now we don't see the demand in the markets, market as strong for this as for the other things that I've mentioned. So I guess uh, our conclusion is that what we are doing long term will also be, uh, will also be uh, depending on what you as our customers want us to do. So I guess please let us know uh, if you have uh, change requests or new functionality IDs in this area. Okay, then I will talk a little bit about practicalities. How are you going to start with using 
and getting this public 360 to Teams integration. Okay, first of all, you need a Microsoft Teams license, which you probably already have, and you don't have to do anything with that license. Uh, it's, it's okay as it is. Uh, from the public 360 part, this integration will be sold as a separate module. Uh, the version 5.9 of public 360 will be available in before summer sometime. And at that time, the uh, Teams integration will also be available for 5.8 customers. We support online and on-premises, but for on-premises solutions, you have to authenticate with Azure AD to be able to use it. Okay, so how do we get this integration going for you? So Tieto Every and the customer's IT department will in joint collaboration configure the 360 app. And also we have to set up permissions together. Uh, you as a customer decide if you want to distribute the app to a certain uh, selected uh, users in your organization or if you want to distribute it to all users. So the 360 app is located as a tab in uh, the Teams UI and is only uh, accessible to the 360 users. So we urge you to use the webinar survey to tell us to contact you. And together we will get this integration going. So this concludes our webinar about the 360 Teams integration. And we will now start the Q&A session. Thank you. Uh, hello. Yes, now we are at the live part of this uh, this uh, webinar. Uh, we are going to have a Q&A session. And to, together with me, I have uh, uh, Kyla Sankot, a customer success manager from Microsoft. So together and with help from uh, our teams in the background, we will try to uh, answer the questions as good as uh, possible. And uh, I think that some of the questions we have to go uh, get back to, but uh, some questions we can we can probably answer right away. And if you have additional questions, please uh, please just put them in the questions chat and we'll, uh, we'll do our best to answer. So um, I've picked out uh, some of the questions uh, that, that uh, I think yeah, are uh, very good. Um, so I'll, I think I'll just, I think that most of the questions are very relevant and good. So I think I'll just start from the top since, since we have uh, some time to do this Q and A. So I'll just start from the top and then uh, we'll see how far we get. Uh, so the first question is from uh, Charles, um, who asks if the Teams user is not created as a user in P360, will there be a conflict? And the answer to that is that uh, an employee that is not a public 360 user cannot use this Teams uh, integration, so it will not be distributed to that employee. But what is possible is that uh, if that employee creates a file in the Teams channel, then somebody else that is a 360 user can archive that file. So that file can be archived, but it has to be archived by someone that has uh, permissions in public 360. Uh, the next question is, uh, can we archive chat communication? 
Uh, and the answer to that is that we are considering to implement chat uh, in a future release, but uh, we're depending on what you uh, customers tell us that that is important. Uh, then we have a question. Can you uh, connect a team to a project in Public 360? And no, we don't have the possibility for that. But we can, as Lisa uh, showed, connect a folder in Teams with a case in Public 360 so that it's possible to not have to uh, spend time archiving one on one file. You can archive many files at once. Uh, then there's a question about uh, the limit of uh if there's a file size limit and i don't have that answer so i think we will have to get back to that when we send out uh the q a i know that we are handling big files uh by uh, by cutting them into chunks and then putting it together again on the other side but the size limit i'm not sure about that so we will get back to that um is it possible uh, to do this uh, from SharePoint as well? And uh, the answer is that it's not uh, possible. Uh, it's only possible to do this through Teams right now. But in the background, as you're probably aware of, um, Teams is using SharePoint as the file, uh, file storage. Uh, so uh, this is uh the files that are in teams are stored in sharepoint so in that sense it is possible from sharepoint too but but it has to be uh, a teams channel uh part of a teams channel to to be able to archive it right now at least okay uh next question how do i implement uh 316 teams and I talked a little bit about that in the presentation, what to do to, to get going on this uh, integration. So if you have more questions about that, then please respond to the survey that we send out after this meeting. And then, uh, then we will answer you more specifically um, based on who you are. And we have a question about uh, document libraries that are created on the Teams SharePoint area. And the answer is that we are not supporting archiving from, from that at the moment, but we are looking into the possibilities to expand the functionality in the future. But we don't know yet if we're going to support that. Uh, one question about the history list. So does the history list show your total history, including documents uh, you only have looked at in Public 360? And the answer is that it shows the case history list from Public 360. So the most recent cases that you have been looking at uh, is shown in the case history list in Teams 2, so that you can pick from the latest, um, the latest uh, cases that you have been working on, uh, independent on if it's in 360 or if it's in Teams. Yeah, and there we, uh, then we have a, a, a little more like complicated answer uh, question to answer, but I'll try. So how does this uh, integrate with Public 360 on-premises? Uh, how does the architecture between Teams and 360 look like? Uh, yeah, so um, you need to, this works also on-premises as long as you open up for internet to come in 
to your uh, internal uh, network. So it's it's the same way as you have to do with other integrations because Teams is uh, hosted in Azure, right? So it's it's internet based. So to make that integration happen, you will have to open up uh, for those calls. So there are there is an API uh, that we install on the Public 360 server that is called by our Teams application. So that is in like very few words, uh, the architecture behind this integration. Uh, uh, Kyla, uh, have you seen any like trends? It's it's so many questions, which is very good. But but have you seen any trends on what I should maybe prioritize to to answer? There are several questions on the changes of documents happening. If changes happen, whether in Teams or Public 360, will it be synchronizing the changes on both platforms, as right. well as the cost of the integration? Yeah, can, can you read one of those questions about, uh, about uh, the document uh, changes so I can answer, uh, answer that? Let me see. Oh. Let me just pick one. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of them. Let me just try to pick uh, one of them, such as. Can anyone edit files in Teams and will the changes be uploaded if they are not users in Public 360? Yeah. Is what I've been uh, yeah, that is uh, uh, that it is how it works. So if uh, if somebody that, for instance, a guest in your team uh, from outside of your organization, they won't have the uh, Teams Public 360 integration uh, installed, right? Because they're not in in your organization. But still, they have the possibility to put in files, of course, because that's Teams functionality. And then somebody from within the organization can do the archiving of the, uh, of the file. And then if this external uh, person uh, creates uh, some changes in that file, then the uh, job that Lisa uh, talked about will synchronize uh, the changes over to Public 360 and create a new version based on those changes. So that is possible. Or that, that is how it works. Yeah. And then there is one that is here about, would you like to talk about the cost? Because that's also a recurring question about the integration cost. Uh, yeah, I think that uh, I think that we will do that when uh, it is uh, it is a separate module uh, with a separate price. Uh, but we will get back to that when you contact us. Uh, when you tell us that we should contact you uh, in the survey, then we will get back to the pricing specifics. Also, another question, will the integration work on the Public 360 on-prem or only cloud version? And will it be also available in Business 360 solution? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I'm glad that you asked, uh, asked that. Uh, about the Business 360, it will support uh, Business 360 as well, as long as you use cases in, in Business 360, because the Teams integration relies on the uh, on the uh, case connection. So, but as long as you use cases in your business 360 solution, the the uh, integration is supported also in business 360. And that other scenario that you were referring to, uh, Kyla, what was that business 360 on, on, on prem and the cloud right. only cloud. Uh, uh, it is also supported on premises as long as you have the possibility to open up the internet uh, traffic or like uh, open up for those calls that we need to do 
to archive stuff from Teams, which is in Azure and your on-premises Public 360 solution. I also see a question here about if you want to have um, if you want to have some custom fields that need to be uh, that need to be filled out on your uh, cases. How can you do that when it is created the Teams integration? Uh, and uh, the answer to that is that that is not supported through the Teams integration because what we, what we have tried to do is to to make the uh, integration as easy to use as possible so that end users can easily archive things into Public 360. But what we have the possibility to do is to set some default values behind the scenes so that even though the end user is just filling out two or three uh, fields, like you saw in Lisa's demo, then we can set default values to fill out more values. But of course, these default values will be configured to be a certain value, right? Uh, so, so if you need to, if you need to, for each uh, each object that you archive, you would have to set different values. Then that is not supported in the current version of the Teams integration. So it's it we we have tried to find the balance between functionality and easiness to use. Yeah. Could we still uh, have one more question, Thomas, or? Yeah, uh, I, I, uh, I have time. So, and I think it's uh, still a few minutes left of the, of the webinar. So, uh, fire away. There's a question on how is the files transferred from customer tenant to public 360 tenant? Customer tenant, uh, I don't understand the question to be honest, but if the question is how it is transferred between the teams uh, oh, location, I would assume. yeah, and the public 360, then it's transferred by calling, uh, calling a service that is installed on the public 360 side. So uh when you uh when you use the the teams app you are sitting on your client on your uh, local machine uh and you are archiving uh the the file uh through an api that we have exposed on the public 360 server so that is independent on if it's on premises or uh, in cloud it's the same service that we have exposed and then the file is part of that request from your uh, from your teams um, application your teams public 360 application and uh, and the public 360 server could you also share if the app will be available in Microsoft Teams apps, or does it require custom install? If so, how will the app be updated? Mm. Good question. Uh, it will be uh, available in the Teams app store, but we haven't uh, been able to finish the process for that yet, but it will uh, quite soon be uh, available in the Teams app store. and. Uh, we are lucky enough to have uh, Kayla and uh, the rest of the Microsoft team uh, working together with us. So uh, we will we will do this uh, quite soon, I think. So then it will be uh, publicly available. But of course, to use it, you will have to have a public 360 uh, installation and a 360 user uh, to to be able to to uh, take advantage of the Teams Public 360 integration. Yeah. Good. Also, will the integration work on Teams running on a Mac OS system? Yeah, this is uh, this, this is just a web application, so it's independent on those uh, technologies. Yeah. 
good. Also, there's a question about can two users still work on a file at the same time in Teams app, even if it has been in public 360, as long as the document is reserved? Yes. Uh, the Teams uh, functionality is not affected by the fact that there is an integration between Teams and Public 360. Uh, the file list uh, doesn't really know a lot about this integration at all, so uh, people can uh, cooperate with their files and, uh, and uh, then when they store it, then the changes will be synced over to Public 360 as a new file version. So that is, and that is one of the like main benefits uh, of this integration, right? That you are able to quite easily get that um, uh, working together with the files uh, opportunity. Follow and, uh, up on that. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, can you also specify which entity they could uh, create and archive a case document from Teams? Uh, can you please uh, repeat, uh, Carla? Can you specify which entity you want to create and archive a case or document to from Teams? Uh, I didn't understand that question. I think I have to get back to that in the in the when we send out the, the Q and A's after. Uh, mm. after the, mm. Yeah. Uh, then. I uh, think, yeah, there, there were so many questions. It's so fun uh, that there is so much engagement uh, around this integration. Um, I was also thinking, just, just to emphasize this um, working together things that I, uh, that I think is, is very important. Um, we plan, as I said in the presentation too, to have, uh, have functionality to publish uh, files and documents from Public 360 to the Teams uh, file list. And then you can think about the scenario where you want to, you start with something in Public 360, you have a case in Public 360, and you, you create, you start an outgoing document in Public 360 to, uh, as part of the uh, as a case handling. Uh, and then you could from Teams, uh, get that uh, outgoing document in Teams and work together with your colleagues, for instance, in Teams, in this, uh, in this file, and then it will automatically be synchronized over to Public 360 again, right? So that's the next big improvement, I think, in this integration, and we plan to have that ready in, in the next version in 5.10 of Public 360. So I just wanted to uh, emphasize a little bit about that because I'm very excited about this uh, possibility. Will you be able to share us details when they could expect the next version? Uh, not right now, but uh, sometime this autumn, uh, the next version will be uh, out. Okay, so I think I think I could sit here and answer questions uh, all day, but but uh, we are approaching the end of this uh, webinar. So, uh, Carla, do you want to add something from the from the Microsoft side? I think that uh, it feels like I've been talking a lot the latest 20 minutes. And it's just so exciting to see all the questions coming in, Thomas. A lot of people are excited given the integration of Public 360 in Teams. I myself am excited. Wanted to see more of the upcoming features that you are to release. Um, from our side, from Microsoft, if you have any questions on Teams, Teams platform functionalities, please do reach out to your Microsoft account team and we will be happy to assist you on anything Teams related questions you may have. Thank you, Kayla. That's uh, very good to know for us and for uh, our uh, common customers as well. Uh, then I think it's uh, then I think it's uh, time to just uh, say uh, bye. Uh, 
uh, and close this webinar. It's been a great experience to see all this engagement and remember to contact us through the survey if you want us to contact you about uh, buying and installing this integration or if of course if you have questions about the integration too. Okay. Uh, thank, thank you, you very much, much. everyone. Bye.